We are going on a field trip today because I wanted to see if I can measure myself like a star. I have no idea if this is gonna work, so let's find out. We are headed over to the lovely Victory Park in Pasadena, but first, a very, very important quick stop for some caffeine. There are no napkins. <laughs> Never mind. And a little treat, because, you know. Why not? Astronomers use something called parallax to measure distance to stars. Now we've talked about this before, but I wanted to see if I could actually put this into action. And I really have not tried this and I don't know if it's gonna work, but I hope it will. And I think it will because I have faith in parallax. You gotta go hair up for this. <laughs> My thing cracked. Still works. Now, if you want to do this yourself, all you're going to need is a camera and preferably a tripod. If you want to get a physical distance though, you're also going to need a tape measure to measure the distance between your two observations. And you're going to want something in the background. In this case, we're going to be using the lovely San Gabriel Mountains for that, but you can use whatever, as long as it's far enough away. I wore the brightest thing I own so that you'll be able to see me even when I get far away. <laughs> Let's do it. All right, I want to get far enough away that, you know, there's a significant distance to measure here. There's our beautiful cameraman. All right, I want to mark where I'm standing, so. Boom, there we go. So we've got the tripod set up here to capture the actual image and we're gonna move the tripod. So first we need to mark where it's at at the moment and we're going to bring uh, Tipler and Mosca in to help us out with that. <laughs> All right, so now we want to move parallel to where we are at and you don't need to move super far, but you wanna move far enough that you're gonna get you know, some visible parallax. That is the location that the thing you're measuring at is going to move relative to the background. Okay, so a very key part of the parallax measurement is knowing the distance between the two observations that you took. So we're going to mark the location of this tripod as well. There we go, volume two, Tipler and Mosca. I'm getting so sweaty. <laughs> it's like I'm crying. <laughs> and then we can take our observation from the second position. Now the unit that you're going to get your distance in is the unit that you measure between the two things. You can measure it by footsteps or you can measure in physical units, which is where your tape measure would come in handy if you wanna know, you know, actual inches or centimeters or something. So in this case, that is going to be about 105 inches. Now, if you're doing this yourself, you're not gonna need this, but I got this so that I can confirm that distance once we actually do the calculation. So I got one of these so I can measure the physical distance out to there and prove to you that these parallax calculations do in fact work. All right, I'm gonna put the camera down to record what this actual measurement is, but I'm not gonna look at it because I wanna do these calculations blind and see if they actually work or not. <laughs> I think we did it! So now that we actually have our images that are spaced by some distance apart, now we're gonna do the fun part. Math. So I'm gonna let you guys follow along as I do this. And um, I am really just doing this off the top of my head. I'm gonna be so jazzed if this works though. I hope it does, it should. I understand the concept. I have a nine minute video in here that won't load. Two of them. Excuse me while I have a panic attack. Do I even have the data that I need? This is unfortunately also an accurate representation of science. Oh good, this program will open it. Weird, okay. So now I'm going to grab <laughs> some stills. Oh, the pictures I need. So one thing I did was I took a little ball with me so that I would have like a really small point source to measure, but you could do this with anything. It doesn't have to be a ball. In fact, I'm gonna do it multiple ways. So some of these will have the little orange ball in it and some of it I will just be measuring to, you know, myself. Okay, so I got six in this position. So let's go over to the other position. So we'll go ahead and grab three of just me. Now me and the ball are the same distance away. So we should get the same result whether or not we're using something on me or the ball. Okay, so now I have multiple images in the two different positions. So I want to analyze these images in some way. You can pretty much, I don't know, use any like image software for this. I'm going to be using GIMP because I like me some free open source software and I know how to use GIMP. So I'm going to open up a spreadsheet to save my results. And then of course, let me start opening the images. So let's open this first one. <laughs> I'm like so nervous that this isn't gonna work. <laughs> I'm about to disprove science here. Here's what we want to do. We want to find some object or some point in the distance that we can reliably identify between pictures, regardless of which position I'm in. So for this, I planned to use the mountains. It did end up being a bit of a hazy day, so the mountains aren't as clear as they could be, but I still think we're going to be able to find a feature here. So let's zoom in to give us like a really good look at something in the background. Okay, how about the tip of this peak right here? Let me put a little dot on it so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's that's the peak that I'm gonna be using. Let me um, set up this spreadsheet. So we know we have the images, they're gonna be in different positions, and we're gonna get um, a measurement for the background. 
and that's gonna be X and Y, and we're gonna get a measurement for the thing that we're trying to measure. So we'll call that object location. This position one, and let's measure the object of this thing in the background. So um, you can just do this in, in GIMP. You don't even really need to use like a special tool for it because anytime you put the mouse over the image, it tells you where the mouse is at. So I'm going to say that this point right here is the background point and that is at 827.203. So I will put 827.203. And this one where there's no ball, we're just measuring me, but I'm actually probably gonna measure to the center of my face just cause it'd be weird to measure like to my boobs. <laughs> Not doing that. Center of my face is 862.480. See, easy enough. So now let's go ahead and open up our next image. And then you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do it again. Doing it again, doing it again. Okay, so that's in my face. Let's do the ones now with the uh, little ball in them that's maybe a little bit more like a star. Okay, we can see that nice little orange ball here that is at 855441. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I don't like the way this set is set up because it was like redundant information kind of. All right, but going back to the one with the ball. Okay, so we figured out where I am and then we're gonna measure up to this mountain again at 829203. All right. And now let's load the second ball picture for this position. And then let's grab our last picture from this position. Okay, so now we've taken all of our measurements for the first position. And this is a good chance to do a little bit of a sanity check. So we've had the camera set up on a tripod. Nothing has been moving from the camera and we're measuring a stationary point on that mountain. So that should be in the same spot in every image. So if we look at our measurements between all the different images, we can see they're pretty much the same. They're within one pixel of one another. And that makes sense because we're not measuring something that's one single pixel wide. So you might not be in the exact same position every time there's some human error here because I'm doing measurements. Again, if we look at the object locations, um, I was in the same spot, I didn't move. So like you would not expect, you know, my position to change very much. And indeed you see, they are pretty close together. Not exactly because, you know, my face moves a little bit more than the mountains do. <laughs> and then in the ball, you see it is actually a little bit different. Um, so for example, you know, you're kind of at a um, higher point and you're got a shorter distance. But that makes sense because I was holding the ball over my head. But between the different measurements of the ball, it's relatively consistent. So that makes sense. I think we've got some good measurements here. So let's go ahead and do this with the other side. Okay, so we've just loaded our first image of the other side. Let's zoom out and look at this as a whole and look at the difference here. So there is some difference in the background, um, but there's more difference in me. And that is what we're trying to capture. <laughs> so I think you can kind of see it visually here, but we can still see that same mountain in the background. And so we are going to be using that same point. We are now on the second position, first picture, and we're gonna be doing me. So this mountain is at 621, 182. I measure this down to my face. And I mean, I think you can immediately see how far much over to the right I had to go. And that is definitely going to become important here. Okay, so center of my face is right there, 864, 462. Okay, let's load in another one. Okay, we'll do the last one of me. Note that although the mountain, I'm expecting it to be in the same place, I'm still measuring it every single time. I'm not just assuming that it's in the same place. Okay, so now we can move on to the ball for this side. Now notice I'm trying to compare similar positions between the sides. So the ball's, you know, kind of being held in the same spot so I can compare between the two positions better. But it might not totally matter and we'll talk more about that. <laughs> okay, second ball picture. All right, last one. <laughs> Okay, so we've got a bunch of measurements now. So what we want to do is we want to find the difference in the position of the object relative to the background between the two positions. Okay, so let's consider our first row here. We say we have delta, whoops, delta x, delta y. So this delta x and delta y is the difference between the measurement in the background and the object in the foreground. So now we can just do that for all of them. I think something should hopefully immediately pop out to you as soon as these columns populated is that the delta y's are very similar across both positions, but there's a very big jump in the delta x's between the positions. And that's the, from the parallax. That's what we're gonna measure, this is so cool. Okay, I'm so glad this is working. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm literally doing this on the fly. We know that we moved our camera 
laterally. We did not move it up and down at all, so we really don't expect this y value to do anything for us. It's not really going to be containing that much information because it's really not the dimension in which we are expecting parallax to happen. But it's nice to have there. We could inc incorporate it if we wanted to, but I'm just going to focus on the delta x. I'm actually going to rename this. Okay, so x object relative, y object relative. So a little bit clearer about this because we're about to deal with an actual delta x or a different delta x. <sighs> this is why I normally plan my videos. <laughs> I ramble. Delta x, and I guess we can do delta y. Why not? This delta x and delta y is the delta between the positions. So what we want to do is we want to average together all those measurements we took. So let's average together the measurements of me and the x dimension, and then we want the relative measurements here. And then we're going to subtract that from the average of the measurements in the other position for that same configuration. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for the y direction, even though, again, I don't expect this to really encode uh, any information. So why are we doing it? I don't know, just for fun. <laughs> Also, by the way, if you're looking at me doing this Excel and you're thinking, wow, there are so much faster ways and better ways that you could do this, I absolutely agree. We're just doing this fast and fast and dirty, all right? Fast and dirty. Okay, so we can see delta Y, four. Delta X, 210. Okay, you see where the signal is coming from? Yes. And then we'll do the same thing for the ball. Beautiful. I noticed that these two delta Xs are very similar. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I love it when science works. Okay, so great. We just calculated the change in the position of the foreground object relative to the background when neither object was moving, only the observer was moving. The observer being the camera. Um, and we got this in pixels. So what? how does that translate to a distance? There's a couple steps to go here. Okay, so what we actually want is the difference as an angle, not as a pixel. But luckily, cameras have fields of view, and those are angles. And we know how many pixels are in our camera, and we know what the field of view of our camera is, and so we can calculate how big a pixel is in angles, and that's what we're gonna use. This is going to depend on your camera. You should be able to look this up. So in this case, these images were actually taken on my husband's camera. We were, we were filming on both, but these ones I'm pretty sure are from his camera, and he has a Pixel 7a. Okay, so here I just searched up the specs for the camera on the phone that I was using, and I can see that it has an 80 degree field of view. And I know how many pixels it is because I have the image information. So 1920 by 1080 pixels, because I was exporting these. So you want to use the pixel measurement from the image you're actually taking measurements on, because that's where we were measuring pixels. So what matters is how big a pixel is in that context. So that might not be the exact same as like the native resolution from the video. So just whatever you were doing, whichever image you were taking data from, you want to know how many pixels that was. But the angle of the camera is constant. So that is 80 degrees. Its field of view probably isn't the same in two directions. Okay, so from the specs, we know that the camera has an 80 degree field of view, and I'm pretty sure that's gonna be for the wider dimension. So we're just gonna look at the X pixels um, from the image that we got, which we know is 1920. Then the angular size of each pixel, basically, which is called the instantaneous field of view, is the angle divided by the number of pixels. We give you an angle per pixel. Now this is in degrees, so we probably want this in radians. So we will do radians of degrees. Micro rads, you can multiply by a million. So there you go, 727 micro rads per pixel. We know the delta x in pixels, we know the angular size of a pixel, multiply those two together and you will get the angular difference. Okay, so this angle that we just measured from all that work, we measured an angle, right? That's called the parallax angle. We just measured the angle of this triangle but that's not a right triangle. So if we wanna make it a right triangle, we can just bisect it with a line and then we'll have a right triangle. So that means we want half of the angle we measured and we want half of the baseline as the length of this leg. And then we can use trigonometry to figure out the distance of this leg. So if you remember Sokotoa, we know the opposite leg, we know the angle, we can figure out the adjacent using tangent. Honestly, Sokotoa is a lifesaver. I still use it all the time. <laughs> Now, because this angle is usually very small, usually um, in astronomy, we'll use something called the small angle approximation. Basically, in the small angle approximation, the tangent of the angle is just equal to the angle when you're working in radians. I'm not going to do that because we're not necessarily in a super, super small angular regime and just because I want to be really clear about the actual trigonometry that's happening here. Okay, so we want the tangent of half of this angle 
And then since we know tangent of the angle equals opposite over adjacent, if we want adjacent, we know that that is going to equal opposite divided by tangent. Now remember, the size of this leg is also half because we bisected our triangle. Okay, and we can do the same thing for our other measurement. Okay, so we can see that I was six and a half times further away than the distance between the two observations. And that's a measurement. That is a measurement of distance. Now, you might not want that as your unit of measurement, but sometimes it's actually okay. So if you think about, for example, doing this for a star and you're doing it on opposite sides of the Earth's orbit, and so your baseline is 1 AU, that's actually not bad. We like AU as a unit. I use AU all the time as a unit. But it's obviously also a lot of times it is nice to have a physical unit or a more measurable unit, I guess, than this kind of nebulous idea of it's six and a half times, six and a half times as far away as this distance. So if we take the distance by, say, pacing out the distance, so just my feet, then we can get a baseline that way. And I did this, and it was eight steps. We know the tangent of the angle is the same. And so then this calculation will also be the same. And so then you will get that this distance, so this is just in like unit lists, basically. And this is in steps. So this is also in steps, because we took a unit in steps, and we divided it by something unitless, and so we ended up with steps. So that's great. I should have been about 52 steps away from the camera. And I did pace this out, uh, so let's see how I did. All right, so we're going to start at where I was at, which, remember, we have our lovely non-classical physics here. One, two, three. Not the straightest line I've ever seen works. All right, and then we can do the same thing again, but I did actually measure in, you know, inches and centimeters. So we'll pull up that measurement. So the distance between the two locations that we took the observations was 105 inches. So that means that I would have been about 685 inches away. Okay, so now let's do the unblinding and see what this distance really was. Oh my God, how off is this gonna be? Okay, look down, look down, look down. Okay, this is saying like 60 inches, but obviously it's more than 60 inches. So there must be like some multiple of a hundred that I was just missing. I mean, this is, I guess, the disadvantage of not looking at this when I was doing at it, because now I don't. <sighs> well, that wasn't the inches side. That was the centimeter side. Oh, okay. Well, we can do this in centimeters. <laughs> okay. Centimeters is just 2.54 inches. All right, so this was definitely the side that we were seeing in the video. Yeah, you just get to like a meter and then it just, there's no indication. I don't feel great about this. <laughs> All right, let's see if I can maybe see it from here. I was really expecting this to be like a slam dunk moment when I looked at the footage and saw the number, but sometimes things work a lot better in my head than they do in practice. Okay, we're gonna go back frame by frame here and see if we can spot that red number. <laughs> there, I can see it, I can see it, okay. <gasps> 22 meters. Okay, so the actual value is 2260 centimeters and we got 1740. 520 centimeters off. It's about a 23% error. So, you know, this isn't the best measurement I've ever made in my life. <laughs> I was hoping it was either gonna be really, really close or like so bad that I knew I fucked something up because right now I'm pretty sure I messed something up. And, but like, it's possible that there's just so much error in here. My guess is that I calculated the IFOV wrong. Y'all, I'm feeling very defeated here. I, th I really thought this was gonna work better than this. Okay, I think I figured it out. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit like an idiot uh, for a couple of reasons. One, because like, maybe I should have figured this out beforehand. I don't know, I realized as I was doing it, I was like, this doesn't seem right, but I'll just run with it. And then obviously it wasn't right. But also I was doing this in Excel spreadsheet and I closed it out and I didn't save it. I Don't ask me why, I don't know. So I'm just gonna redo this really quick. I literally have to remeasure everything. I'm just gonna do it for one because yeah, I think I already showed that like it's relatively similar across the different images. Um, but yeah, we'll start with just one position, two position, background, x, y, object x, object y. Just need it. That's what I am. Okay, this is not a bad one, so we're just going face. <laughs> and the background object feels. Okay, so object x relative, object y relative. Why did I not save this? I really just gave up. This is really what happened, just that quickly. Okay, and then we can do delta x in pixels. Okay, cool. <laughs> We're back to seeing that we have a big difference in the x direction and not so much in the y direction. 
that works. It's in pixels. Now we wanted to get it into angles and I think this is where everything went wrong. Okay, so I did look up the specs, remember, and the field of view of the Pixel 7a rear camera is 80 degrees. Now, before I was like, oh, it's 1920 by 1080. I don't know which side to use. I'm just gonna use the long side. Aha, no, I needed to use the diagonal, <laughs> which makes sense. I used like, I was, and I even was like, I don't know which side to use. I'm just gonna run with one and it was wrong. So then we know the diagonal is gonna be the square root of that squared plus that squared. So that's the diagonal in pixels and we have the field of view in degrees. So now we can do the IFOV in degrees per pixels this way. Perfect. And then we actually are going to want this in radians per pixel. Boom. Okay. So then that means the delta X in radians is the delta X in pixels times the radians per pixel. And then we know the parallax angle is going to be half of that. And then we know the distance that we had in our baseline was uh, 105 inches. So 267 centimeters, which means that the like side of the triangle, uh, I'll call it opposite because that's opposite the angle is going to be half of that. Sorry, I'm rushing through this because I, <laughs> I already did all this. Okay, so now the distance will be opposite divided by the tangent of the angle. <laughs> it's a lot closer. <laughs> Okay, it's still not perfect, but okay, so I got 20 meters and 20 second, seconds, 20 meters and 20 centimeters, whereas we measured it at 22, 60 centimeters, measured, calculated. I mean, that's pretty close. That worked, guys. It really worked. <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's see what our error here was, or look the difference. 11% error. That's not bad. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Instead of it, like the blinding being me checking the actual measured values, it ended up being me checking the calculated <laughs> because I messed up the calculations. And as embarrassing as that is for me, I do think it's actually very uh, good example of, I don't know, how you use science. I was like, I think something's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. And I looked more into it and I figured out what I thought it was. And it did indeed make me more correct and made more sense than the previous thing I was doing. I'm pretty proud of myself. <laughs> Ooh, let's do it in steps now too. That's just gonna be the same, except our baseline now was eight steps. Okay, so I thought it was gonna take me about 61 steps. 72, 73, 74, 75. 76. It was 76. So hopefully we got kind of close. I was a little bit more off on steps, but you know, that kind of makes sense because it's much less accurate way of measuring things. I'm going to say this this time. Just you never know. You never know. I hope you give this a try if you're curious to see if you can do it yourself and see if you can beat my 11% accuracy and be very curious to know, but uh, a qualified success. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon. Bye. <laughs>